repeat sleep boxing repeat lust as always to be joined by paul kelly for another weekly boxing betting tip show paul thank you for your time today um how are you yeah i'm all good are you? thanks uh, looking forward to another weekend of boxing some big oh we yeah. always love heavyweights um yeah the main event. so yeah looking forward to getting stuck into a few betting tips from the uk and abroad too this weekend yeah we've got a couple of um Obviously, a couple of rematches at the O2 in London, which is um, yeah, which is going to be in- interesting to discuss. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what 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 you what you got to say. I think just like a reminder for people, this is a betting tips show. It's not like a predictions show. We're kind of we're basing what we see kind of on value. We're not saying this is our prediction. We're not saying this is definitely going to happen. We're just saying. That looks like a good betting tip. It could happen. The odds are really good. That sort of thing. Um, cool. Uh, I've got a curveball to throw at you, which I'll throw at you in a little bit. But first things first, what is your first betting tip this weekend? Seriously, um, yeah, I don't like the sound of that curveball. But yeah, my first, my first, my first betting tip comes from the main event, and I mentioned this with uh, on the preview with Elliot Greg and Greg. Um, I, there's some, something telling me that I, that Derek Chisora is going to win, and Chisora just the wins two to one with the majority of bookmakers. But in my opinion, if Chisora is the win, there's only one way that'll it'll, it'll be, and it'll be by stoppage. So Chisora knockout at nine to two, KO TKO is is I'm if I was to put a bet on this weekend, I would be all over that personally. Um, I just think that. Since the first fight, I know it was six years ago. I know it was a split decision, but in reality, it wasn't. Pulev won it probably re- fa- fairly comfortably. Um, I just think since then, there's kind of been a, a switch that's been flicked with Chisora. And Greg mentioned, made a good point. He thought it was like since since he teamed up with David Hay. He's um, I know he's not with him anymore, but since he teamed up with David Hay, you know he kind of he's just kind of taken more his boxing more seriously. And mm. has lost quite a few big fights. You know, it's, he's really only lost. Recently, to to boys the level above him, you know your Parkers of this world, um, Dylan White, etc. And I just think that he, I don't think, although Pulev fought for the world title um, against Joshua just last year, the year before, twenty twenty, um, I think he's aged worse than Chisora has, and there's just something telling me that Chisora is going to land a few body shots, hurt him to the body, and then land a massive big hook, wobble Pulev, and stop him. Very interesting, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm. In terms of like, I can't really, I can't really call it. I just think that. I think another thing is is Pulev. I think that he kind of lost every round to Anthony Joshua a couple of years ago. And apart from that, I feel like the last real kind of top fifteen, top twenty heavyweight he beat was Huey Fury back in 2018. Whereas Chisora, although he's not been winning, he's been in competitive fights against Usyk, Joseph Parker twice, and Pulev's 41. But I'm just, it's a tricky one. Uh, at the same time, Chisora, you know, in terms of names, that Ch- Chisora has had competitive fights against good fighters, but in terms of times he's actually won, who's he beaten apart from Carlos Takam? Yes, that's kind of that's that's my issue in terms of actually winning the fights, and it's not it's not all about winning. It's about giving a good account of yourself. There's a difference between you know losing and being blown out in one round, and kind of giving a real war over to, over twelve rounds like he's done so many times in the past. But I just kind of feel like he could end up coming up short, just just slightly on points. Um, that's my gut feeling. I had to give you one, so I'm going to disagree in terms of from a betting tips perspective and go for P- Kubrat Pulev decision at five to four, which is obviously the same. That was what happened six years ago. Pulev not a massive punch in the heavyweight division, so I think if Pulev wins, it's going to be by decision. Personally, I don't think he's going to stop Chisora. Um, so that's what I'm going for. Pulev five to four to win by decision. Yeah, very interesting. You know, it's one of them where I can see that. I could see that outcome. I really could see that outcome. Outcome. Yeah. Um, I think that it's hard to say. Isn't it? I, don't, I think Pulev's only had one or two fights since the Joshua fight. So, you know, it's difficult to say how he's aged or how much he has left. 
This is probably because Chisora's from the UK. We see him far mm. more often. But yeah, I'll try to keep yeah. on the my second betting tip of the weekend, and it comes on the undercard in the co-main event, and that's the Madramoth and Soyo fight. Um, first time around was really weird. Madramoth was winning. He was up on two of the three judges' scorecards. The other, I think, had a, potentially a draw. So, but it was a close enough fight. You know, he wasn't running away with it. Um, and then something weird happened in the ninth round. The referee, Madrimov, was um, putting on an onslaught on Soyo and looked like you know he'd hurt him and wobbled him. And the bell went for the end of the ninth round. Yet neither Madrimov or the referee heard the bell, so he just kept teeing off on his opponent and and then stopping him. And it went down as a ninth round stoppage. And it, that's why they're um, having this rematch. The WBA ordered the rematch, saying that it wasn't really fair, the, the final outcome. However, I think that the KO was probably likely to come in the, before the end of the 12th round for Madrimov. So I'm just going to go for that again. And Madrimov to win by KO, TKO is 11 to 8. Yeah, um, I've not got much to say. I, I agree with you. I've actually got the same tip down. Um, I've actually got odds of five to four, so so not 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 as good, but um, that's what I've got. Yeah, I think that Madrimov is a special talent. I think he'll be able to make more adjustments. I think he's fresher than Sorrow. So I, yeah, that that contradicting what I said at the start of this video, that's kind of is my prediction as, as as well as a betting tip, and that's probably. In terms of just doing a single, that's probably the one I would focus on as well, personally, um, to get better than evens for Madrom, Madromov to win by KO. I think of uh, fantastic odds. So that's what I'm, that is what I'm leaning leaning towards for sure. Um, cool. All right. Have you got one more for us, Paul? I do indeed. Yeah, and it's from it's from the boxing that isn't in the UK. It's from I'm not not 100 sure where it is, but it's the Mark McSen fight against Ray Vargas, mm -hmm. and I think this is. Oh, this is the fight of the weekend. We were saying this um, on the preview show. Undefeated against undefeated. I think it's 24 and over 22 and 0 against 35 and 0. You know, something. I think it's what well, I think I saw one of the tweets that we put out earlier in the week was 59 and 0 combined record, something like that. So <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a ridiculously good fight, I think. And I, rem I, I don't know if you remember, Ellie. I remember when we were doing this betting show months ago um, and we were talking about the Gary Russell. Magsayo fight and I was just like oh yeah Gary Russell points never heard of this guy <laughs> obviously Magsayo won, won the belt um, however I'm going to go with Vargas here um, although he has he has a most most of his fights he's won by stoppage he hasn't had a stoppage victory in like five or six years Vargas so I'm going to go for Vargas um, by points um, at the minute I haven't seen anything for a unanimous decision it's just coming up as a points decision, um, and you can get that at six to four for Ray Vargas. I think that you know, at down at those lighter weights, Vargas is absolutely huge. He's five ten and a half, I think, for mm -hmm. what a you know for someone who's down at bantamweight, super bantam, whatever. You know, that's just ridiculous, um, in my opinion. Um, so I don't know if Mike Say will be able to close that distance. You know, both of them are our big punchers, and Mike Say is probably known as quite a Heavy puncher in his own right too. But I just think that, you know, Vargas is the classier boxer and will be able to do that for 12 rounds. Um, hence why I've gone for him on, to win on points of 6-4. to four. However, if I was to fight, I just couldn't get um, tips on a unanimous decision yet. I think that'll come out on the Friday or something the day before the fight. That yeah. would be what I'm for, but just playing it safe now and going for Vargas to win on points of 6-4. to four. No, look out for that one. I think there's definitely some difficult fights to call this weekend, um, for sure. I think it's 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 tricky, but no, I agree with you. I think that is the fight of the weekend. It's always exciting when two fights with massive undefeated records go up against each other. You know, someone's going to kind of lose lose their rows, as as the saying goes. But um, yeah, it's it's a look. It's a fantastic division as well. I think Ray Vargas interested to see what he looks like at featherweight whether he can rule at featherweight as well as he did at super bantamweight and i think as we know in this country the featherweight division is such a fantastic division with the likes of lee wood michael Conlon. i can you know i can i'm sure sure he can sure he can go on but um yeah just interested in um in if we're going to see 
see one of these guys possibly face a Brit in the next couple of years. Who knows? It would be fantastic if that was to happen. Um, so mention had a curveball at the start of... Actually, sorry, I'll just go on to my final tip before we do the curveball. Um, Felix Cash against Gagwood Vaughan Alexander this this weekend on the Chisora Pool of Undercard. Vaughan Alexander is 17-6 and six, and he's only been stopped once. And he's been stopped by um, Zach Parker in two rounds a couple of years ago. Um, my feelings are, I think Felix Cash can punch just just as hard as Zach Parker. That's just that's just my opinion. Saw Felix Cash stop Denzel Bentley, uh, Mark he Mark Heffron in brutal fashion the last couple of years. So I believe, although he's only been stopped once, I believe he can stop Vaughan Alexander, who's not got a fantastic record. Um, it's kind of is kind of I know he's um he's a much I think he's a much older fighter than Felix Cash as well. There's a big age gap as well. So yeah, I'm going for that as well. Felix Cash to win by KO is five to four. All of my bets are the exact same odds this weekend, by the way. They're all five, they're all they're all five to four, so a bit boring. Um, but yeah, just just going 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 for that as well. Yeah, I, I like Felix Cash. I think that's I think you can definitely punch as hard as Zach Parker. And, you know, hopefully after this fight we see um, Cash in some bigger fights, you know, both domestically or on the European and world scene. But time for this curveball. Yeah, time for the curveball. Give me one moment. So I think, I don't know if you remember, um, when it was Canelo Bivol, I wanted to talk to you about knockdowns. And I'm going to do the same for Chisora Pulev. Um, something that really interests me. I don't know why I always think it's a bit sad. I actually, I can't remember what the odds were, but I put money on zero knockdowns for Canelo Bivol. I think it might have been evens and, and won some money back. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to tell you the odds. I'm just going to say, if you had to put a fiver on X amount of knockdowns, what would you what would you pick? What's, what's the number you're going for? You can pick zero if you want. <laughs> it's, it's completely up to you. Okay, so I would probably, Say, because I'm going for the Chisora knockout. Um, I'm just, it's, I'm just debating whether he stops him on his feet, or potentially knocks him down, and then stops him on his feet, or or knocks him out cold. I'll, I'll go for one. I'll go for one knockdown in Derek Chisora's favor. Fine. So that is fifteen to eight. So if you put a tenner down, you would return you twenty eight pounds seventy five. So not not bad, not bad at all. Um, so yeah, that's that's that that that's it. I think it's quite a fun a fun thing to bet on for anyone that's interested. Two knockdowns is three to one. Three knockdowns is six to one, and the odds go up and up. Zero knockdowns is five to two, which I think I might put some money on. I think I mean that's that's what that's what I would go for. But yeah, we shall see if that happens. Yeah, very interesting. I think those odds are pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, you Oh, you love the zero knockdowns. I can see. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's very, it's a weird thing to be interested in, but um, yeah, is 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 what it is. Um, all right, Paul. Um, I will hand over to you for your. What is your return for the treble that you you stated for us? Yeah, thanks, Elliot. So if you put the Chisora knockout at nine to two, Madrimov knockout at eleven to eight, and Vargas on points at six to four. If you put those three into a treble, it comes out at thirty over thirty one. To one, well, so okay. thirty-one five to one treble actually. So a tenner returns you three hundred and sixteen pound roughly. Um, even you know even a fiver would return you one hundred and fifty-eight. So after a few weeks of maybe safer trebles and doubles, I think yeah. this this bigger one, obviously being enhanced by the Chisora knockout, which is nine to two, that's probably why it's it's so high. But yeah, definitely one that I think is quite appealing. Fair enough. No, good, good stuff, mate. It's exciting. Um, okay, just on my one, I'm going the opposite to you. So I'm going Pulev decision. Same as you with Madrimov KO and Felix Cash KO. Um, and a tenner returns you 114 pounds. So much smaller return. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm Pulev Chisora. Uh, that's that's my tip. If I had to give you a tip. Um, Felix Cash KO Madrimov KO I'm actually quite confident about so yeah. I might do those two as a, as a double actually um, And but we'll see we'll see um, but yeah that was it I think that's it from us Paul um, plenty to discuss some good 50-50 fights happening this weekend and yeah looking forward to seeing 
who was right and who was wrong ne next week. <laughs> yes, cheers, Ali. All the best. Cheers, Paul.